fight! So when things get too hot... Don't you! I've told you all the information you might need to know. They've fallen in the uh, blowhole at Warrywood. Whilst we were dealing with these guys, he's been bottled. $550 fine, that one. These cops keep it cool. What they're doing, they're making homemade bombs and letting them off. What brings you to the Northern Beaches? This is sick. Here's ice pipe. So at this stage, you're under arrest. So where are you injured? Just your hand. Keep your pants on, because it's really not impressive. Welcome to their world. All right, guys. Let's get going. Tree. You're doing a piss anyway, bar. You were urinating no. in the tree. It's been a pretty quiet night for a change, but for Nicole and Maddie, things are about to ramp up. A call has come in about a man behaving aggressively on a main road. 36, we can see the lights just ahead of us. The most recent call was about a minute ago. 36, we got him. What's happened? People called police because there was a male walking up and down Pitwater Road in Arabian kicking cars and they uh, assumed he was drug affected. What's this all about? And we saw him just start staunching up and being aggressive and as we got out of the car, he started threatening us. Get sick, dead. Uh, he ended up getting OC sprayed due to his aggressive behaviour. Uh, and then a bit of a scuffle to get him cuffed. Get on the ground. ground Just get on the ground. Sit on the ground. Get on the ground now. now. Hey, right on. Stay You're sitting stay down. There's, a, there's, a, there's an ambulance coming. I'm about to fuck an ambulance. You take me to an ambulance. I'm getting satanic. I need to see what I'm doing. What's that? Hey. Just calm, bro. I need to... He appears like he's, a, he's affected by something. Just could be drug. Related, we're not too sure, but obviously being sprayed with a can of OC spray that makes him extra agitated. Yeah, so while we were dealing with him, um, his brother came over my shoulder and I didn't realise who it was, but obviously quite quickly we realised that it wasn't another police officer. And then he's um, decided that he would like to wrestle with police as well, so he's found himself in handcuffs as well. Come on, brother, man. What's going on, mate? Sit on your ass. Yep. Good man. Good man. Good man. I'll grab you some water. Yeah, he's not being very rational. He's quite calm in one sense, and then and then the next minute he's trying to get up and clenching his fists and gritting his teeth at us. So um, they're quite volatile situations because you have to be watching him all the time and make sure that you know he's not going to hurt anyone or himself. Stay there. No, it hurts. It hurts. Yeah, so they're giving you more water. OC burns and oh snot comes it's from cold. everywhere. It is. Extremely painful. Tippy, head back. Head back. Head back. You got more water. Lucky for this guy, the Ambos are quick to arrive because OC, or capsicum spray, can burn for hours and the best treatment is with baby shampoo. A little bit of um, shampoo for your eyes. Okay. Well, the Ambos are here, the best people for you. I've had this before, darling, but this is different. Need to see. Yep. Because I keep seeing shit I don't want to see. So the reason why we use OC spray if there's violent confrontation occurring, so that male was being aggressive towards us and, and sort of rather than, you know, us getting hurt, we use OC spray to try and back him off and calm him down and, and tell him we're not going to put up with him threatening us. And it seems the police already know these two. You're on parole, buddy. I cannot look at you. Yeah, you're on parole. So this brother is off to Manly Police Station to be charged with assaulting police and resisting arrest. And the other one, he's off to hospital for a medical assessment. Nearly six years and I've never used my spray, so it's gone all over my hand and I've, my hand's very red and sore, so I can only imagine what his face is like. I tell you what, if you rest your face up against that silver stuff, aluminium cools it. Good boy. Out of the rain! Oh, I'm very wet. The Northern Beaches is safe for another night. Mm. Rosie is patrolling the 
streets of Mona Vale looking for a known criminal. This woman has a charge pending and police are keen to locate her. So Vanessa, you don't know when she's going to do it. She generally just walks around uh, the whole day and she'll commit these crimes in certain locations. She's well known for stealings and frauds in particular. She gets into shop owners' bags, things like that. She also just blatantly steals from the shelves as well. What I'm doing today is just to see if you've seen her um, recently. Vanessa's well known um, to the shopkeepers especially. So what they've actually done, they've uh, printed off a picture of her face. They've handed them out throughout the um, shop area. Although there's no sign of her at the shops, back at the station, officers have a lead on her whereabouts. This morning at four o'clock or something, she was arrested by city police and then she was released at 11 o'clock this morning. With a heads up that she's on the move, Karen and the team try and work out where she'll turn up next. She's been True. on the booze all night. True. She probably will want to go home. Yep. We think she'll probably come home to Worrywood and she only has public transport, so we're assuming that she'll catch a bus home. So she could either get off there or up here. We've got people at Neutral Bay, we've got people at DY at the main bus stop, and we've got people at Narrabeen at another bus stop, and in the vicinity of her place, if she gets off a bus and walks. 12.04 is the next. So I think we'll get her today. Which is right now, it's 12.04 right now. With no time to waste, Karen plants a team of plain clothes cops at one of Vanessa's favourite hangouts. And then they wait. She knows all the shops and she likes going back to the same shops. She comes in all the time, tries to get to the till. They know her, they send her out again. So every time she's out, she goes to the shops. So we're thinking the bus will go northbound and it's going to stop at the bus stop just down the end here. So we've got guys waiting at the bus stop and we've got um, plainclothes officers on bikes as well. Yeah. And they've spotted her. Or the one getting out pink. now. There you go. Pink, pink white, shorts. Pink That's her. Orange. Yep. As I've got the rear vision mirror, I could see that uh, the person we're looking for, Vanessa. So I've jumped out of the car and then we've stopped uh, at the door there. We're presenting ourselves as police officers and then arrested her. So where have you just come from? I've been with my sister. I think she knew it was coming. We'll take her back to DY and give her the opportunity to be interviewed in relation to several matters that we've got. Oh, it's good for the community because it, there's a lot of people that get upset about the, the things she does around the local shops and there are a lot of victims. Yeah, the job's done. It's good. A dispute among neighbours turns ugly. She's just probably a pest. She is. Yeah. Mm. She's a psychopath. And... Some guy runs in saying they're fighting. I come out and they're going at it. Gibbo breaks up a fight right outside the cop shop. The one punch thing is all over the news. We all know about it. Could have easily killed him. Is this guy taking a piss? Hey, buddy. $550 fine, that one. Back in your pants. Sort yourself out. <laughs> it's 2am Sunday morning and police are responding to a fight right across the road from the police station. I believe you've been involved in some sort of fight here. So where are you injured? Just your hand. I'm sitting in the station which is directly across the road here doing my uh, station duties, start hearing yelling and screaming. Some guy runs in saying they're fighting. I come out and they're going at it. So I jump in and grab both of them. So you just injured there, you got no other injuries? First bloke I spoke to in a white shirt, his knuckles are all cut up, result of hitting a few teeth. And the second bloke, his face looked a bit messed up too, as a result of probably the other guy's knuckles. Big split lip down the side here. Well he said that he was punched by this other bloke and then he's Punch back. He said, she said, right? They're both saying conflicting versions, of course. Because everyone's drunk, we can't speak to anyone now. Right, speak to them tomorrow, follow it up in the next few days. We can look at an affray offence, a very serious offence. 
Um, we're looking at the most minimal offence, saying offensive conduct. They both receive a ticket. You've got witnesses. I've right got there. his details, yep. your details, yep. two witnesses. Yeah. So what are the witnesses have so far? I haven't even spoken to them. All I got is you guys are fighting. Everyone's drunk, mate. I know that. Yeah. All I know is you two kicked the shit out of each other. But Gibbo's also trying to calm a worried mum on the phone. Is he okay? Because he's, he's fine. Well. He's fine. He's just going to get in trouble with us eventually. I call you as soon as I get out. And she's not happy. Mate, like the reason why we're just sitting here she's is we're just waiting for the ambulance. Around okay? you? How old are you? But still, man, you're not scared of your own. You're scared of your mum. Everyone's scared. Come down to the ambulance so they can have a better look at you. No the Ambos are done patching up the other bloke and he's escorted to the closest taxi. Oh. Thank you, Constable Jackson. Oh, mate, any time. You're there any time. Nice than some of the other cops. Oh, mate, I'm a pretty good bloke. I mean, we all do stupid things when we're drunk. If you're just going to start arguing, just walk away. You're going to end up like both these blokes having me breathing down the back of their decks. Due to your intoxicated behaviour and what's happened tonight, you can't come back to me for six hours. The one punch thing is all over the news. We all know about it. And the sentencing is pretty serious now. Now, one of these witnesses told me that he booted him in the head. Could have easily killed him. And then he'd be going to jail. dispute. It's a pretty trivial matter, but police actually get calls like this all the time. So the informant's called us because her neighbour has put dirt in her mailbox um, and she wants us to take action against it. So we're just going to go have a chat. Hello. 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 All right. And this was in my letter box. From your neighbour? From Gina. How do you know it was Gina that did this, Robin? Because she's the only one that attacked me, and everybody here will, will tell you. But did you see anyone do it? No, I didn't see her do it. Like, unless someone's seen her do it, we can only put the allegation to her, and if she says, no, I didn't, then... Unfortunately. Why don't you try and catch her? Like... What would you like us to do? Well, say something that will... <sighs> we can go ask her. Um, I understand I mean, how what... frustrating it is. I honestly do, but at the same time, the things that she's doing don't really amount to a criminal offence. She's just probably a pest. She is. Yeah. She's a psychopath. Are you happy for us to just go have a chat with her? Because that's really all we can do well, for Well, yes, if that's all you can do, do what you can. Police go to jobs like this every day, whilst they're not, you know, massive on the scheme of crime, it's important for us to come in and comfort people that want to make these reports, um, that we can de-escalate the situation now before it, you know, gets out of hand and, and someone ends up getting hurt. Hi Gina. Hi. Lovely. We've come here today because we've had an incident with your neighbour. Okay. She's had this envelope with dirt or poo put in her mailbox. Um. What can you Sorry, tell me I don't about know that? Anything about that? Look, my mother the died last week. Sister and I are pretty upset, right? I don't need grief from my neighbours. I stay away from them. All right. Well, what I'm telling you is, is that if you have done this, not to do it. I wouldn't go near her house if you paid me. Okay. Well, Jump up, please. you've been warned. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. So Gina has been given a warning, but one week later, the police are back. So what what happened this afternoon when you came home? Were you inside your house, were you? Yes, and I heard this banging and I went out there and... She's come out the front or the back of your house? The back, the back. She didn't need to get over the back fence. Yeah. And she just tried to get over it and she's yelling and screaming at me and I'm going to get you. I'm absolutely scared to death. I just don't know what to bloody do. This happens a lot. And with the reports never eventuating into anything, police are starting to get tired of being involved. Georgina, who's the other woman, basically what she's, her version is that the dog keeps trying to get into Robin's backyard, it's only a little, little shih tzu, uh, so she's just put a few bricks across the bottom of the fence to stop it from doing that, and then Robin's come out with a long stick and has started basically hitting all the bricks out of the way. Can't you do anything? She can't climb over the back fence, so if you hear her yelling, 
Just ignore her. We've got one side of the story being told by one half and a different version coming from the other side and we haven't got any independent witnesses that aren't effectively friends with one or the other. Um, we can't determine where the truth lies, basically. There's one missing and there's one... It's one, a, a, one half miss. a paling. She's not going to squeeze through a paling. Robin one has paling. actually taken out an AVO against her neighbour, which means the next the time there's a call the out, the it will have to be escalated. This is not a joke. We're not going to keep coming back here over fence palings, OK? The next time we get called back here for something like this, you're both going to Manly Police Station, you'll both be charged, and the magistrate can decide on it. Am I clear? That's clear. Yeah, that's clear? That's clear. Good. All right. No worries. Goodbye. Goodbye. Coming up. Hi, how are you going? Just a quick breath test. Do you have your driver's licence there? How to freak out a learner. I just like saw them behind me and I was like, oh, what's going on? And I was pretty nervous, but OMG. Looks like he's about five. Yeah. I've had a tiny teddy in years. Teddies? Teddies? Now I feel like tiny teddies oh, no. all of a sudden. <laughs> it's Friday Arvo, and while they're chatting about biscuits, Scott's run a rego check on an L plater in front of them. I just realised with this learner in front, the owner of the car was born in 1934 with an expired licence. Oh really? And I thought, oh, there's a, I thought there's a learner driving, but then again, if Grandma's teaching yeah, well. her to drive on an expired license. I just realised. Have a little stop then, shall we? So the registered owner is a suspended, really old person, uh, but they're also got a license, expired license. So we're just double checking that everybody's got a license and the car's fine. How are you going? Just a quick breath test. Do you have your driver's licence there? Does, is this mum? Yeah. Do you have your licence there too? Fortunately, it's mum and not dear old Gran supervising. Just have to do a quick breath test. Just need you to count to ten for me out loud. One, two. Well, it seems the driver's okay. And I just test mum as well. Oh my God. Let's hope I'm okay. I had a bottle and coke for a lift. And okay, with the no cheers worries. from the pub across the road... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The reading is in. Just be back. No, I had a drink just before we left. Um, I didn't know we were going to go for a drive tonight, so I had a vodka and coke. And luckily, I um, didn't finish all of it. So you understand that your limit as a supervisor is different to normally? Yeah, so it's 0.020 is your limit today. Yeah, yeah okay. So what I need to do is just seal your lips over the end of the tube and blow into it nice and steady until I tell you to stop. Stop. Oh, just. But you're fine. Just had a bottle. Yeah. With supervisors of learner drivers, they are required to stay below 0, 0.020. So as you can see, one drink can. Yeah. Yeah. I All right. So you're fine. Me. But yeah. yeah. All right. I won't do that I'll just again. get your licenses and I'll come back. So the theory is, don't have a drink just before you're about to go out with your son somewhere, even though you're not driving. Don't have a drink at all. OMG. He... Looks like he's about five. I looked at his photo and I was like, holy He's born in 19... People in 1999. He must have literally just got his license. I just like saw them behind me and I was like, oh, what's going on? I saw the antennas and then the lights came on. I pulled over and I was pretty nervous, but it's all good now, so yeah. Coming up, a lucky escape on a dark stretch of road. Guy allegedly swerved for a wallaby and lost control of his vehicle and ended up in the trees. Backman. The driver is shaken, declined airboats. Yeah, Northern Beaches 3-8, that's going to be us heading there. It's change over at the moment, so we'll start heading up that way. It's just gone 6pm, and Waddies and Sky were about to clock off for the day. 29 minutes we're going to be going that way. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. But now, 
They're heading deep into West Head National Park to a car accident. Whoa. Where a young driver has come around the corner and hit a wallaby. Ugh. Was it a big wallaby or a little wallaby? Did you see, did you only see it at last second when you last, came to the corner? Last second. Like it basically came last. around and you were like, yeah, bang. That guy leaving, heading out of the parks, allegedly swerved for a wallaby and lost control of his vehicle and ended up in up in the trees. Didn't, didn't hit your head. Didn't yeah, so you didn't hit your head. Injured, no glass no sat on your face or anything like that. And how do you think, you, was it the I, I have no idea how you know, you just, I got just cuts on my hand and cuts yeah, my elbow and I don't, don't know how it happened. <laughs> he's immensely lucky that he's actually yeah. walked away uninjured with, he's got like a minor cut to his arm that's got a band-aid on it. So if it had been a bigger tree, if you had a hit, Front on definitely could have been a fatal accident. Just like you didn't, like you didn't go head on. Yeah. The damage to the car is pretty extensive. Like it's basically a write-off. He's told us he's climbed out the window of the car because the door's been jammed shut from the impact of hitting the trees. The driver's passed a breath test and is free to go. But Sky and Waddies are left to clean up the aftermath. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just do that. Watch your step as you go back because it gets bumpy. <laughs> lock you in. Yeah, lock me in the <laughs> Good? Good. You all right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. I was like... As ever. <laughs> Thankfully, Lucky the fireys have come to the rescue. <laughs> we did drag, drag it all off the as best as we could, yeah, but right, yeah, we're it's we're just... just Westhead, Kunga Chase National Park. It's pretty much almost as far west and north in our command as you can get. Well, that much mud in my oh, and you, when you filthy sleep. boots. It's one of the hazards of working in this command. It's such a big command and you've got to go from end to end. Not so much hanging out by the beach. We're up in the bush now, so <laughs> it's a bit of fun. <laughs> Lovely nighttime drive with my partner in the car. <laughs> I like these disco lights. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Whoop, 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 whoop.